Good morning. Welcome to morning prayer on this Tuesday morning. I do hope and pray you are doing well this day. Let's begin with a call to worship from God's Word from the book of Colossians chapter 3 verse 1. If you have been raised with Christ, seek those things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Here a prayer of seeking the help of the Lord before worship. Everlasting God, in whom we live and move and have our being, you have made us for yourself, so that our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Give us purity of heart and strength of purpose, that no selfish passion may hinder us from knowing your will, and no weakness keep us from doing it, that in your light we may see light clearly, and in your service find perfect freedom, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let's confess our sins to an almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourself. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your way to the glory of your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. Our scripture reading this morning begins in the Psalms. We will be reading together Psalm chapter 24 through Psalm chapter 26. Psalm 24, a Psalm of David. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who dwell in it. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to what is false and does not swear deceitfully. He will receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek the face of the God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and lift them up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. Psalm 25 of David. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in you. Let me not be put to shame, and let not my enemies exalt over me. Indeed, none who wait for you shall be put to shame, for they shall be ashamed who are without cause treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right, and teaches the humble in his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. For your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my guilt, for it is great. Who is the man who fears the Lord? Him will he instruct in the way that he should choose. His soul shall abide in well-being and his offspring shall inherit the land. The friendship of the Lord is for those who fear him, and he makes known to them his covenant. His eyes, my eyes, are ever toward the Lord, for he will pluck my feet out of the net. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. The troubles of my heart are enlarged. Bring me out of my distresses. Consider my affliction and my trouble, and forgive all my sins. Consider how many are my foes, and with what violent hatred they hate me. 
Oh, guard my soul and deliver me. Let me not be put to shame, for I take refuge in you. May integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait for you. Redeem Israel, O God, out of all his troubles. Psalm 26 of David. Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity, and I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. Prove me, O Lord, and try me. Test my heart and my mind, for your steadfast love is before my eyes, and I walk in your faithfulness. I do not sit with men of falsehood, nor do I consort, consort with hypocrites. I hate the assembly of evildoers, and I will not sit with the wicked. I wash my hands in innocence, and go around your altar, O Lord, proclaiming thanksgiving aloud, and telling all your wondrous deeds. O Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Do not sweep my soul away with sinners, nor my life with bloodthirsty men, and whose hands are evil devices, and whose right hands are full of bribes. But as for me, I shall walk in my integrity. Redeem me and be gracious to me. My foot stands on level ground in the great assembly. I will bless the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let's join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. Our New Testament reading today comes from the Gospel of Mark in the 12th chapter as we've been reading through this gospel together. Mark chapter 12. And he began to speak to them in parables. A man planted a vineyard and put a fence around it and dug a pit for the wine press and built a tower and leased it to tenants, and went into another country. When the season came, he sent a servant to the tenants to get from them some of the fruit of the vineyard. And they took him, and they beat him, and sent him away empty-handed. Again he sent to them another servant, and they struck him on the head, and treated him shamefully. And he sent another, and him they killed, and so with many others. Some they beat, and some they killed. He still had one another, he still had one other, a beloved son. Finally, he sent him to them, saying, They will respect my son. But those tenants said to one another, This is the heir, come, let us kill him, and the inheritance will be ours. And they took him and killed him and threw him out of the vineyard. What will the owner of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the tenants and give the vineyard to others. Have you not read this scripture? The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. And they were seeking to arrest him, but feared the people, for they perceived that he had told the parable against them. So they left him and went away. And they sent to him some of the Pharisees and some of the Herodians to trap him in a talk. And they came and said to him, Teacher, we know that you are true and do not care about anyone's opinions, for you are not swayed by appearances, but truly teach the way of God. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Should we pay them or should we not? But knowing their hypocrisy, he said to them, Why put me to the test? Bring me a denarius and let me look at it. And they brought one, and he said to them, Whose likeness and inscription is this? They said to him, Caesar's. Jesus said to them, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. And they marveled at him. And Sadducees came to him, who say that there is no resurrection. And they asked Jesus a question, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies and leaves a wife, but leaves no child, the man must take the widow 
and raise up offspring for his brother. There were seven brothers. The first took a wife, and when he died, left no offspring. The second took her and died, leaving no offspring. The third likewise, and the seven left no offspring. Last of all, the woman also died. In the resurrection, when they rise again, whose wife will she be? For the seven had her as a wife. <clears throat> Jesus said to them, Is this not the reason you are wrong? Because you know neither the scriptures nor the power of God. For when they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. And as for the dead being raised, have you not read in the book of Moses, in the passage about the bush, how God spoke to him, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. You are quite wrong. And one of the scribes came up and heard them disputing with one another, and seeing that he answered them well, asked him, which commandment is the most important of all? Jesus answered, the most important is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said to Jesus, you are right, teacher. You have truly said this, that he is one and there's no other beside him. And to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding, with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself is much more than all the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that, he answered wisely. He said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one dared to ask him any more questions. And as Jesus taught in the temple, he said, How can the scribes say that Christ is the son of David? David himself and the Holy Spirit declared, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. David himself calls him Lord. So how is he his son? And the great throng heard him gladly. And in his teaching, he said, beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and like greetings in the marketplaces and have the best seats in the synagogues and the places of honor at feast, who devour widows' houses and for a pretense make long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. And he sat down, op and he sat down opposite the treasury and watched the people putting money into the offering box. Many rich people put in large sums, and a poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which make a penny. And he called his disciples to him and said to them, Truly I say to you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the offering box. For they all contributed out of their abundance, but she out of her poverty has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we continue together, I'd like to read to you another prayer this morning. <clears throat> o gracious and holy God, give us diligence to seek you, wisdom to perceive you, and patience to wait for you. Grant us, O oh God, a mind to meditate on you, eyes to behold you, ears to listen for your word, a heart to love you, and a life to proclaim you. Through the power of the Spirit of Jesus Christ our Lord, amen and amen. Join me in prayer at this time. Let's pray. Our Lord and our God, we thank you for a new day. We thank you that your mercy is new today, that today the sun has risen. The birds are singing your praises. Lord God, while everything might have seemed wrong last night, today we are reminded of your new creation work. 
you hold all things by your power. You forgive all our sins through Jesus Christ our Lord. And you help us to recommit the day to your care and trust. So today, may we remember to love you with all of our hearts. May we remember this is the first and greatest commandment. Our God, the earth is yours and the fullness of it. Everything in this world is yours. Our time is yours. Our talents are yours. The things that we have in our homes are yours. So Lord, we pray that today we would commit them to your care and trust. May we remember there is no sacred and unsacred, that all things are yours. And Lord, it is whether our hearts are seeking you or not that determines how we use them. So I pray today that the way we parent would be patient and gracious, that we would remember to walk away when we need to, that we would remember to fight the right battles and not the wrong ones. Lord God, that you would help us to have loving hearts and help us to disciple our children in patience. Forgive us of the past sins of yesterday. Lord God, for those going to work right now, heading to work, may they be entering a mission field. Help them with the stress of this whole season. Please, God, give us strength as we go to work to be able to do a good job for your name. And again, help us to be patient with those who are not patient. Help us to show your mercy to the unmerciful. You said, blessed are the merciful, for they will obtain mercy. We need your mercy, so may we show it to others. Lord God, we pray for those working from home, for diligence, to not be slack, but also, Lord, for extra grace as they are seeking to figure these things out. And Lord, for those who have lost their jobs, for those who are home and not able to work, Lord, we pray for your protection and provision over them. Please, Lord, may they be reminded that our God will supply all of our needs. Lord, we remember that widow who came and she gave all she had. Lord, for some of us, all we have is our hearts right now. So may you receive them and may you use them, O oh God. Please, Lord, help our day to be honoring to you in all we say and all we do. May we remember that this day matters for eternity. And if this is our last day, may it be our best day, we pray. Help us, God, to love and to seek your face and to be a people of truth when there's a lot of error and confusion and falsehood around us. Help us, God, to be your people and the sheep of your pasture. We love you and we thank you. Give us clean hands and a pure heart today as we start out this day. When they get dirty and mucky, when they get corrupted by the world, may we run to you for the washing and cleansing we need. In Jesus' holy and faithful name we pray. Amen and amen. As we close out today, just a quick thought from Mark. We just read that passage in Mark, and Jesus said, Beware of the scribes. And one of the reasons why is because for a pretense, they make long prayers. I want to remind you today, it's not about how long you pray. It's that you pray. Just remember that um, this past Sunday, I was sharing from Psalm 25, and the last verse of Psalm 25 just says, Lord, save. Pray that throughout the day. Lord, save. Don't, for a pretense, make long prayers. And don't beat yourself up if you don't pray long. Short prayers, God hears. Listen, it's, it's praying in season and out of season. It's praying without ceasing. So when things are overwhelming today, and they probably will be, just make those short prayers to God. Just call out to him. It doesn't need to be eloquent. It doesn't need to be fancy. It just needs to be from the heart. He wants us to come to him. He wants you to come to him. So good morning to you all. Thanks for watching. Pray you have a blessed day. Uh, if we can pray for you in particular, um, you can go to lovepensacola.org slash needprayer, or you can just message me. would love to hear from you. And if we can help you, please let us know. I pray this day is a good day for Jesus' name. Amen.